Welcome back to my Final Fantasy XIV drama series. Today's drama story is about Jay's Harem Heresy. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. This is a part two, okay? A different perspective on a story I read in the past. Some of you guys might have already heard that story and watched the video, but if you haven't, it's okay. You don't need to know the story, but it is a cool kind of like Easter egg if you have. A sequel! Hell yeah. All right, let's get into it. Hello! I have a story to tell about Jay from the previous Discord Masturbator story. I actually played his fourth spouse and only husband of the group. Unfortunately, it is a bit long, but I will try to be concise. For a bit of very important context, I am a trans man in real life and the character I played was in fact a trans man as well. A rain who was raised among the Malagold tribe of Zela, which are noted to accept rain members. We'll call my character Shu. So while Shu is rain, he is culturally Zalin, which for those who might remember, Jay's character was horrendously xenophobic, and especially towards Zela. But I did not know this at first. I should also mention that I am and have been in a happy relationship with my boyfriend of three years, something which I have never hid and in fact actively talk about. This will all come into play eventually. Okay, so we got an RP story on our hands. But if you remember Jay from the Discord Masturbators story, this is the same Jay. And this is the fourth spouse. So Jay was a busy man, had many wives in the role-playing scene. I met Jay shortly after Endwalker released. I had finished said expansion on my main character that I did not really roleplay with at the time. And I had created several RP specific alts. I've roleplayed for years, but never in game, here or otherwise. But I really wanted to give it a try, even if I can be incredibly shy. So at first I wandered Ulda, trying to work up the nerve to approach someone, and eventually planted myself outside the quicksands, having given up. Not long after, Jay turns up. Our interaction was pretty run-of-the-mill. We introduced ourselves, my character stating clearly that he is of the Malagold, and Jay had no ill reaction to this whatsoever at the time. Strange, now knowing that his character was apparently created to be xenophobic. And so, we chatted for a while before he accidentally passed out. I go to bed and spend most of the next day on my main before I pop into Shu again to try and get him through some of the MSQ. Shortly after, Jay sends me a tell, like slash tell, apologizing for passing out, and I tell him it's fine. It really didn't bother me, and I understood because it was late. I chat with him for a bit. He realizes I'm going through the MSQ, and he offers to join me for a while. I take him up on the offer, and we go on until I eventually get tired and I go to bed. And that was more or less how our friendship began. I would be doing something, and he'd notice I was online, and he would either turn up to surprise me for some impromptu RP, or he would ask to join me since I was usually going through the MSQ. During these impromptu RP sessions, I did notice some discrepancies. Like, he supposedly did not remember that Shu was raised with Zayla, and the next time I mentioned that, he reacted in a barely restrained negative manner. Something which confused both myself and my character. But I figured he merely forgot because it had been a while. Shu is a kind and gentle man who doesn't like conflict. So I had him politely brush it off and tried to ignore it. But I did not realize at the time that these were flags of some of Jay's bigger issues. I like to think our characters had bonded well despite those hiccups, so much so to the point where one night during a heart to heart, Jay actually apologized to Shu in character, in tears and all for his bigotry, that he wanted to understand the Zayla like he did, to be better, and most of all, that he did not want for him to leave him. As I said before, Shu is kind and gentle, and he tries his best to be an understanding person. So he accepted said apology and offered to try to get Jay to understand him and his culture. 
The conversation went on and feelings were brought into play. And at the end of the night, I ended up joining his FC with Shu as his fourth spouse. This didn't bother me as I knew previously that his character had other wives. And though I am not Polly myself, I thought that the premise could be an interesting way for Shu to explore other parts of himself. I joined the FC Discord shortly after. Though it took me a little while to work up the nerve to start properly interacting with the others. I usually try to avoid voice calls because I find them a bit uncomfortable as is, my status as a trans person aside. I just don't really like to talk and usually just sit around quietly while everyone else does, maybe piping up on occasion. But one day, Jay all but begged me to join them in the FC voice call while he streamed a solo Palace of the Dead run. And I relented because I wanted to try to be more out there and genuinely make friends with others instead of being a cryptid like I usually tend to be. I noticed over the course of the hours that some of the other members, particularly the other spouses who were online at the time, were a bit touch and go with me. Fair enough. I was a new person and I was still being pretty quiet. That is at least until one I'd yet meet got on. We'll call her Harley. She was very direct with me. After noticing my presence, she outright told me, no offense, but I don't trust you. Which I mean, fair enough, I guess, but I was admittedly taken aback because I'd never done anything to her or anyone else in the FC. This was my first time properly meeting any of Jay's friends really, since most of them were rarely on their characters that were in the FC to begin with. But I just laughed it off and tried to let it go telling her I didn't hold it against her. I then proceeded to listen to her rant for hours on end about a former wife of Jay's that had supposedly become a backstabbing bitch until I eventually just quietly stated it was time for me to sleep and that I'd rather see them all later. Damn, this Jay guy is busy. Oh my god. I mostly made myself a little scarce around the other spouses from then on, but I did still try to be kind to them when I did have to see them. I didn't want to make them hate me, but I also didn't want to really be around them, you know? At least it was fun when I was RPing with Jay, even if I did notice that he often liked to get saucy whenever we were alone, no matter what he had been doing previously. After a little while, a fifth spouse joined the ranks. Why have one wife when we can have five wives? The previously Makote doctor who I now know was pressured to Fantasia into a reign. Oh, this is this is the OP from the last story. They say who they now know was pressured to Fantasia into a reign. We'll call her Cell for this story. Seeing as how she and I were the two most active spouses in the FC, Jay began to split his time between us. It didn't really bother me since it gave me a bit more time to farm for glam or do things on my other characters, and Cell was definitely kinder compared to the other wives. Jay also had not gone through the ceremony of eternal bonding with any of us yet, but now that he had achieved his goal of five spouses again after losing several i've been told he decided it was time to begin the plan was apparently for jay to have a ceremony with each of us beginning with cell where he would afterwards destroy his ring and begin again with the next spouse until he finished off with his first spouse who we'll call rue damn that's so like get married break your ring get married again break your ring break oh my god this plan, of course, did not last long. About midway into the RP between Jay and Cell for their journey to each mark of the 12, I logged in one morning before any of the other spouses and was met with Jay, who instantly invited me to a party. I accepted and he told me he had something on his mind that he would like to talk to me about. So I, of course, told him I'd listen. Apparently, he had changed his mind about his character being Polly and was thinking that he wanted to be monogamous with Shu. I was surprised at this and Cell logged in while I was trying to decide how to respond. So he instead took the conversation to Discord. 
I ended up telling him that I would be happy either way, that I signed up to be spouse number four, and that I really did not want to step on anyone's toes. I was already wary enough of Harley, Rue, and the other wife, though Jay assured me that they wouldn't hold it against me if he chose me, and that they all, and Cell, supposedly knew he had been thinking about going mono. They just didn't know with who. I reiterated what I told him and that the choice was his to make. And after some deliberation, he chose to keep both Cell and Shu as his only two spouses. Which made sense considering Cell was pregnant in character at the time. Oh my god, I remember this. He made Cell pregnant in the other story. And was the only one actually in the middle of being eternally bonded with him. Harley would leave the FC shortly after that, and Rue and the other now former wife continued to be barely around despite still being in the FC. I saw less of Jay after this, as he and Cell focused on their journey and eventually ceremony RP, but I instead spent much of the time with a dear friend I'll call Toll. I met Toll through Jay prior, and we hit it off, both in and out of our character pretty well. She confided in me that she had previously been in the FC with a Viera character, but had been made to feel bothered and pushed out by Jay's friend for not playing a Rain, despite Jay telling her that she could play what she wanted. Until eventually she couldn't take it anymore and left thanks to his extremely poor handling of the situation. When Jay continued to try to get her back into the FC, including through trying to offer her $50 to make a female Rain, I tried to stay neutral and listen to both of them, and offer what help I could as their friend. Even if Toll's story did unsettle me when it came to Jay and his other friends, but even being unsettled as I was, I stayed because I wanted it all to work out. It was the first FC I joined and my first time trying to be part of a community in this game, and I just really wanted for it to work. Yeah, so we have like three POVs about Jay. Oh boy. And then, Cell left the FC. Though I liked her, we rarely spoke outside of RP. So for the longest time, I only had Jay's side of the story. He was under the impression that they were together, out of character, and that she had been reciprocating his feelings when this wasn't the case. I myself thought he was in a relationship with Rue, and I would eventually find out that Rue, Harley, and the other ex-wife I met were apparently all of Jay's ex-girlfriends out of character. What? All of them were actually his ex-girlfriends out of character. God, this sounds messy. But that's otherwise unimportant. From Cell's departure, Jay began to cling onto me like sarin wrap. It started small enough, but quickly spun out of control. He shortly figured out for himself the approximate time that I got home from work every day and he would call me every day often even before I made it home. And if I did not answer right away, he would call again and again. Even if I sent him a message telling him I was busy. He wanted to spend as much time with me as he possibly could and at first I gave him the benefit of the doubt and assumed he just needed a friend. I knew he was lonely due to his other friends often being busy with their lives and his being a shut-in as he said and I knew he was out of work and on disability and there were times where I spotted him a few dollars to get him something to eat. But then he confessed to having feelings for me. I turned him down gently and reminded him I had a boyfriend and I was in a very happy relationship and he seemed to take the rejection well at first. But then Jay grew more and more possessive and dependent on me. Him asking me for food money became an almost daily occurrence. And when I hesitated, he would hit me with guilt tripping and promises that he would pay me back as soon as he got back on his feet. I could not mention my other friends outside of the game without Jay insisting on wanting to meet them. I maintained my friendship with Toll and still do. She is like a sister to me now. And Jay seemed to take that personally. While he would be friendly enough with her to her face, behind her back he would often complain about her being two-faced, even when I told him that she wasn't. It began to become clear that he was instigating problems between them in what now I'm sure was an attempt to get me to break my friendship with her because he knew she would come to me about it. 
When I mentioned wanting to start RPing with my main, he dusted off an old character of his and created an FC for them, promptly setting my main as his character's spouse without any interaction whatsoever. Unheard of. <laughs> I can imagine, like, that's just weird to our peers, right? Like, you have to have a story when you're meeting character to character. And he was just like, yeah, they just know each other. Like, just jumping forward. And when I objected, saying I would at least like them to actually get to know one another first, we set about a Discord RP. The premise? He wanted our characters to duel, a fight first, ask questions later type of situation. And so my character comes in with the intent to maim, and his spends the entire fight fixating on just how pretty my character is for a boy, how he's dolled up flirting with him. And one point Jay mentioned out of character considering having his character steal a kiss from mine. While my character doesn't know his and is actively trying to do his harm. But this was, of course, when he could actually be bothered to respond to said RP. Because despite this being his idea, he would go days and even weeks between responses while he spent his time RPing in game and doing other things. When I confronted him about it, he would outright tell me that reading long walls of text bored him and that he just needed to have more discipline. I told him that I just wanted to scrap it. And so we did. But there are two things that finally pushed me over the edge. The first is that he turned a very important story moment for my character Shu into being all about himself. I had a specific story for Shu and always told Jay how important it was to me. Jay wanted to be part of it. I didn't have any problems with it at first, but I did have a problem when I made the mistake of allowing Jay to have control with the storyline. Jay always wanted to be victorious and win in storylines, and this got old for me fast. I started to feel upset with how things were happening so fast and so out of my control. For example, Jay stated he was now all of a sudden a warrior worthy of protecting his love, despite being told that my character Shu didn't need to be protected. Shu only just wanted someone to fight at his side. Jay just wasn't asking for my consent anymore and doing as he pleased with my character basically. I remember going to bed some nights feeling ill with this. The other thing that finally pushed me over the edge was being informed that Jay apparently had an actual fetish for femi slash femboy characters. There is no way to mince it so that it sounds nicer. I did not want to believe it, but far too many things began to make sense. The way he would talk about Shu, even the way he would talk about me out of character. He was always fixating on Shu's more feminine features, his plush lips, his dainty height, his wide and effeminate hips. Not even my main, who is a pretty man who has long hair and wears makeup, was safe from it. When there was the fact that he was always buying effeminate glamour, that he would then beg for me to put on Shu. Even stuff that I explained Shu would never even wear. And Jay would not let it rest until I either snapped at him or just gave in. And when it came out of character things, he was always particularly interested in the fact that I am unfortunately short and slim. And the fact that I still have a rather feminine voice. Always doing things like calling me cute or calling me dear even when I asked him to stop and reminded him that I am in a relationship. But every time he would either backpedal and say he didn't mean it like that, only to go right back to it after a while. And like an idiot, I would just let it go, even if it left me feeling gross. There's a million other things that happened, of course, such as him pushing Purcell and I to RP intercourse so that he could watch, or him pulling me around for weeks in a desperate bid to raise Gil for the plot that he wanted. But if I wrote them all out, we'd have a book on our hands. I mean, it's already a book, but it would be a, a longer book. So just between that final roleplay, some personal real life issues going on at the time, and having it confirmed to me that Jay actually absolutely did have a fetish for that, I finally reached my breaking point. I just quietly left the FCs he had me in, blocked him and his friends on Discord, and unfriended 
each and every character of his I had on each and every one of my friends list. He still has all of my characters that he knows of on his. And considering that I tend to see him hovering around me when I'm on shoe these days, I do not put it past him to be keeping tabs on me. But I do not care anymore. At this point, all I want is to move on with my life. The end. Damn, dude, RP. That was just like so much baggage. It makes me realize that RPing has so many complications and just brings a lot of baggage sometimes. Jay sounds like a very, very complicated person. And I don't know how he could have like so many online wives and just like keep tabs of all of these relationships. And the OP did say that, you know, he has a disability and he cannot work. And he was bugging the OP for food, food money and stuff. And because he couldn't afford food sometimes. But if he could just put half of that time that he spends in game, he could possibly just work online and make some money for himself to feed himself. Like, it just seems like he spends so much time in the in the game. I don't know. Let's see what you guys said. Oh, femboys are cute. Uh, it's just funny that the OP realized later on, like, you know what? He actually has like a femboy fetish. So Jessica said uh, she submitted her side as well. Yeah, we have three POVs of Jay. Just yeah, Jay is a complicated person. Doggo heard the ERP drama and wanted out. That story didn't go into the ERP side that much, but the, the first one I read, the Discord masturbator had more ERP in it. This one is more RP, I would say. Jay needs a whole playlist to himself at this point. Sounds like it. It just sounded like you guys were experimenting. You're like, oh, let's just try this like four or five wives thing in RP and of course, I think a lot of people would be like, okay, that's not going to work out. <laughs> and then just like hearing them on call and like that girl sounded really uh, kind of mean to the OP, the one wife. How manipulative of him. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that sucks. At least he's out of your life now. When I read the stories, it sounds like there was a time that they did have fun with Jay and then they slowly began to realize what kind of person he is. This is a wild roller coaster with no brakes. Yeah. Every time I read a RP story, I'm just like, good God, that was wild. If I ever, ever did RPing, I would do only light things because people get in too deep, it feels. When I say light RP, I, I'm talking about like going into an RP cafe and just like ordering a tea or a coffee. Like, that's it. <laughs> But like, no relationships. The relationships in the RP world sound very complicated. We need, we need to come, come up with like a tagline. Something I should say at the end of my video is like, remember, stay safe or something from drama. <laughs> Be careful with drama or some sort of line like that. Avoid the drama llama. <laughs> Just remember, stay away from Jay. <laughs> I don't know if his name is actually Jay, though. I, I assume that they just gave him a random name and we've just stuck with Jay. Stay warm and away from Limsa. <laughs> I actually make my character hang out in Limsa all the time. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about this Final Fantasy XIV drama story. If you have any of your own drama stories that you'd like me to share and read out anonymously, feel free to reach out to my Discord, discord.gg patra. And a big thank you to my kind members who support my YouTube content.